In this video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to upgrade a project to Tailwind CSS version 3. Here's a simple landing page, which is currently built with Tailwind CSS version 2. And this is a project that we're going to upgrade to version 3. Matter of fact, I have this site open in two different tabs, as you can see here. And this one is going to be used as a reference for the before after comparison as we build the site. This is a Next.js project, but the upgrade steps would be the same if you were using Vue, HTML, or anything else. Looking at the Tailwind config file, you can see this is a fairly standard Tailwind CSS project. We're extending our theme, extending the variant subject, and we're also using the first party Tailwind CSS forms plugin. All right, let's get started with the upgrade. The first thing I want to do is install the latest version of Tailwind CSS with npm install d Tailwind CSS at latest. And we also want to make sure we upgrade a few dependencies, auto prefixer at latest and post CSS at latest as well. And that's done, but you can see we're getting an error here. And this error is coming from the Tailwind CSS forms first party plugin. Turns out if you are using any of the first party Tailwind CSS plugins like forms, typography, line clamp, etc., you also want to upgrade those to their latest versions. Let's do that, npm install dash d at tailwind css slash forms at latest. And now we're all good to go with the package upgrades. The big change in Tailwind CSS version 3 is that styles are only generated as you use them. We're no longer generating every possible permutation of classes and then removing all the unused styles in the production build step. That means that we no longer need to worry about file size in development. We don't need to think about which feature to enable by default and what concessions to make to keep the generated CSS to a size that doesn't choke your browser. Take the dark mode option, for example. We had it turned off by default since it was basically doubling the CSS file size from the get-go, but in Tailwind 3, since only the styles you're actually using are being generated, we've enabled dark mode by default and set it to the media strategy. Dark mode set to false here does nothing since it will still default to media. So unless you want to use the class strategy, you can take this line, thank it, and then discard it. Same deal with the variant subject down here. You can see here we're configuring the active variant for the background colors plugin. This is used for the active state of this button, for example, when I click on it. In the past, we had to be careful about what variants should be enabled by default, but in Tailwind 3, everything is enabled by default. All variants are turned on, and this variants object here does nothing. So we can select it, thank it, and then discard it. And even with the variants object completely deleted, the active variant still works. Ah, <sighs> it's starting to feel clean and minimal in here. The next thing we'll tackle is that purge object. Purge, in case you didn't know, was the process of removing all unused styles before shipping to production using a tool called Purge CSS. I said was because in Tailwind 3 there is no more purge step. We never generate unnecessary CSS to begin with. And since we're not using Purge CSS at all anymore, this option in your config file has been renamed to something that makes more sense. Since some of you may not have used the purge option before, instead of just updating the purge object to the new syntax, I'll comment it out and we can do the setup from scratch together. The new option is now called content and I will set it to an empty array for now. So if I save this and we look at our website, uh oh, looks like we've broken everything. What's going on? Well, think about it. In order for Tailwind to be able to generate the styles that we're using, the just-in-time engine, that's how it's called, needs to know where to look for Tailwind classes. Right now, we're telling the just-in-time engine to look at nothing, so it generates nothing. In our content array, we need to communicate where our template files, where we use utility classes in our markup, are located. For this specific project, I've got some markup in this pages directory. You can see my different pages here. And so I can specify from the current folder, the pages directory, and then we want to catch all the files, including subdirectories with the extension of JSX. But I might use JavaScript or even TypeScript in the future. So let's use curly braces here and specify JavaScript, JSX, TypeScript, and TSX. And essentially you need to think about all the places where you use Tailwind classes and make sure they're referenced. For example, here I have this components directory. It's currently empty, but chances are I will have components in there. So I will also add this with the components directory in my content array. And let's look at our site once again. And yeah, it's back to working. 
So this is specific to this project, but you'll need to specify whatever is relevant in terms of path for your project. And if you've got some styles missing or not looking right, chances are your issue is related to this content option. If you haven't used the purge option in the past, here's a very important point to understand. In order to be present in the generated CSS, a Tailwind class must be somewhere as an entire string in the template path specified. If the full plain text class string is not there, it won't be generated. That's the rule. It's naive by design to make it very predictable. This is something that may trip you up at the beginning, especially if you're using a templating language or a JavaScript framework as we do here. Let me show you a quick example of what you should not be doing. At the bottom of our page, we have this Twitter button component, which will render this follow on Twitter button here. Let's say that this button could support multiple skins or color variants. And so it would accept a prop called color, which would default to black. And we will use this prop value to map to Tailwind colors. And so you'd think you'd be able to create a dynamic class here. So instead of BG grade 900, we would interpolate the colors object and then reach for the key that matches our color prop. Since our color prop defaults to black, colors black should be gray 900. If we look at the website, our button has disappeared. Well, it's actually still here, but doesn't have a background color. The interesting part is that the BG Gray 900 class is correctly generated on our elements, but the just-in-time engine cannot see the full plain text string anywhere in the code, and so it never generates it. What a shame. The good news is in many cases, you can rethink your code to include the full class string. So maybe here we could rename this colors object to BG color classes, and for all three, include the BG dash prefix, so we have the full class string in our value. Down there in the class attribute, we can remove the BG dash and change this to BG color classes and then grab the relevant color. So now our button is back. And if here where we invoke that component, we pass a color prop of pink, it will have the pink 500 background color. And if we change that to purple, it'll have purple 600. So we still achieve dynamic classes, but we do it in a way that is compatible with the just-in-time engine. Now, what about scenarios where it's impractical to specify the template path? For example, you've got some HTML with Tailwind classes coming from a headless CMS or a database, and you can't reference the path for that. In those rare cases, the safe list option might help you. Essentially, the safe list is a mechanism to make sure a given class is being generated no matter what, even if it's not present in any of the templates. Let's say that we know that coming from an API somewhere is the class text pink 500. Well, you can add that to your safe list and I will guarantee that this class is present in your generated CSS even if you never use it in your templates. If your needs for safe listing are a little bit more complicated, you can also use a pattern. So here, let's say we want to safe list more text color utilities, a combination of red, blue and indigo for the shades of 200, 500 and 800. This pattern here will generate utility classes for all possible permutations. So text red 200, text red 500, text red 800, and the same for blue and indigo. All right, so that's the safe list. If you are using safe listing in version two, you can move the safe list to the root level of your config. You can learn plenty more about the content configuration on the Tailwind CSS documentation website. So be sure to check that out. Looking at our new V3 build, when we compare it to the version 2 reference, you can see that the colors are different. The logo here and the button down here are using different greens. What's up with that? To keep it simple, in Tailwind 3, once again because we liberated of file size concerns, all colors of the extended color palettes are enabled by default. In Tailwind 2, only a curated subset of colors was enabled, and here's the tricky part. Some colors from that subset were actually pointing to another color from the extended palette. For example, the green color in Tailwind 2 was actually referencing the emerald color. That's not a huge deal as it only happens with three specific colors, and I'll show you how to get around it. So one way we can fix this is to recreate these mappings in our config file. So in the theme where we extend the colors, we can set the green to colors.emerald. And if you wonder where these colors come from, we are importing Tailwind CSS slash colors. And even if it's not relevant to this project, let's also define the other two colors that change in Tailwind 3, purple colors.violet and yellow colors.ember. 
If we look at the next line, you can see that we had redefined the gray to use the blue-gray color. And this blue-gray color is deprecated and has been renamed to Slate. So the gray colors have changed names in version 3, so let's update our blue-gray to use Slate as suggested. And it will still use the exact same color, but now we're using the new naming convention in version 3. In most cases, you'll get a useful warning inviting you to update the color, and if you've never used anything but the default gray in version 2, you don't even need to worry about any of that. So that's one way of making sure that the colors from version 2 are ported over to version 3, but keep in mind there's also the option to just change the color utility classes in your markup directly. Quite often, folks imagine that doing a search and replace to change multiple classes would be a maintenance nightmare, but it's actually super easy with Tailwind classes. So I'll get rid of purple and yellow since we're not using these in this project. And instead of defining the colors here, I will do a site-wide search for the string green. So we got 16 results in four files and we don't really care about the one in the Tailwind config, which is this one. So we can ignore that file. And for the rest of the results, you can see that our three pages have multiple instances of text green, BG green classes. So we can safely replace all of these with Emerald. And so I'm going to replace them all at once Yes, and boom, the markup is now updated to use the emerald color instead of green. And we'll do the same for gray. 37 results, again, we can skip the Tailwind config file one. We have a collection of text gray, border gray, placeholder gray, background gray, and we're going to replace all of these with slate. And you can see that the markup is now using the BG slate color instead of gray. And just like that, we've completely migrated to the new color naming convention in Tailwind 3. So actually the entire colors object can be removed from our config file. I'm in the version 2 reference website here. And if I click on this follow button, you can see the active state has that dotted outline around it. And this is implemented using the outline black utility. Now, if I look at the new build in V3 and I click on the button, you can see that this outline doesn't work. Same deal for the signup form down there. In V2, you can see the dotted outline. And in our V3 update, you can see it looks different. So the outline black or outline white classes in V2 are technically breaking changes. Since in version 2, they were responsible for setting the color, width, style, and offset of the outline all at once. With the outline property getting better implementation across browsers, we've created a few more composable utilities for styling outlines. As a result, outline black or outline white only sets the color. And so to recreate the same styles we had in V2, we also need to add focus outline 2 for the width, focus outline dotted for the styles, and focus outline offset 2 for the offset. So I'll copy these classes. And when I click on the button to make it active, yep, this looks just like it used to look in version 2. So let's do the same for our form elements. So in the input after the focus outline black, I will add the other focus classes like I've done before and do the same here as well. And let's check that it works. Yep. Nice. A few classes have been deprecated and renamed in Tailwind 3. For example, for this signup form, we're using the flex grow class for this container here, so it uses all the width available. So you can see the flex grow class here. And this class has been renamed to just grow. And the same is true with the flex shrink class, which has been renamed just shrink. There are a few other classes that have changed, but don't panic, the old names still work. You can upgrade without changing them right away and do the migration when you get a chance. We have no plans to actually remove the old names, so you're totally safe to leave them unchanged if this is too much trouble. The base layer in Tailwind 3 is defining important CSS properties which are used for things like transforms, filters, or box shadows, so make sure it's there. If you want to opt out of Tailwind CSS reset called preflight, do not remove the base layer like so, keep it there. And instead, in your config file, open the core plugins option and set preflight to false. And so that way you'll be able to use your own CSS reset, but the base layer will still be able to do its thing with the CSS variables. In our case, we do not want to do this, so I'll remove that. All right, that covers the most important parts of upgrading a project to Tailwind CSS version 3. There are a few more minor changes and things to look for when upgrading. And for a comprehensive step-by-step -step upgrade guide, head over to the Tailwind CSS documentation website and search for the upgrade guide. That'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And now go update these projects of yours to Tailwind CSS version 3. See you later. Bye.